Hi, my name is Patrick Shi. I'm an assistant professor in the School of uh, Informatics and Computing. I just joined the school last year. Uh, my research focuses on large-scale collaboration platforms. And what this means is that, uh, for example, in the 1980s, uh, the, there are these uh, um, emergence of collaboratories that focus on allowing scientists to share resources, large-scale infrastructure resources, such as uh, atomic accelerator, uh, and then, you know, recently CERN, uh, because they, not every institution has access to these resources, so then they collaborate, and then they pull together data collection, and then they interpret data together using, uh, you know, um, information computer uh, com communication technologies. And then in the in the 90s, is about citizen science, about how do you get citizens involved into helping uh, w wider the dissemination of, um, uh, I guess, the data collection, helping the scientists interpret data in the wild. And then more recently, um, so we have these cross-sourcing platforms such as Amazon Mechanical Turk, and, uh, which, which is also often called the human computation. Uh, you know, the machine learning algorithms that you saw, um, you know, the video recognition, uh, very oftentimes it's labeled by people, right? So you get these uh, uh, human, human eyeballs to help you interpret the images and to provide ground truth information to, to these uh, video image uh, recognition algorithms. And then so I'm really currently focusing on how to actually make the computational techniques such as machine learning, um, data mining, and clustering algorithms much more accessible and understandable to the end user so they can provide their own uh, data analysis uh, in their home, uh, you know, sort, sort of, be, to, I guess, uh, uh, beyond simply needing the help of the, um, I guess, a uh, computational scientist, and so they can do it, do it themselves. So some of the domain application, uh, domain areas that I've been working with um, um, much the application area that I typically work with focus much more on the health, well-being, and also welfare of people, both people and animals. Um, for example, um, in the area of 3D design modeling, um, I work with a community of uh, uh, limp different users, meaning that ki kids who who don't have arms or hands. So then, a lot of the times, because prosthetics are pretty expensive for children. And then, uh, I mean, for, for, for most families to, to because these, these could cost like, you know, upper to like $100,000 or something to just buy a professionally uh, produced prosthetic arms. So then, so with the 3D printing technology, uh, we have volunteer uh, prosthetists and also clinicians and also 3D modeler and designers to help the children, um, you know, basically. And these were all done, these were all done remotely. And imagine the difficulty and the challenges in the measuring and sizing of the hand and also fitting and you know, and also like meeting with the parents and and uh, to design these arms. And also in terms of Internet of Things, um, I'm uh, creating sensors to help people uh, meditate to to build these meditation devices to help people relax and you know lower their anxiety and mitigate their daily stress. And then also um, in terms of crowdsourcing and human computation, I'm also um, working on uh, d developing a crowdsourcing platform to allow uh, wheelchair users to to perform uh, online work um, because they're also less mobile users and uh, typically they're constrained by their physical locations. And how, do, how uh, and then the platform focuses on uh, how to better coordinate their, ta uh, coordinate their work and also how they socialize in these online platforms. Uh, and also finally, the uh, computer vision and machine learning application areas. Uh, currently I work with the San Francisco Zoo on uh, uh, deploying um, high definition cameras and also sensors in the zoo enclosures to monitor animal behaviors. Um, so, so what this looks like um, altogether is this um, uh, diagram that I created. So the, the sensor kit, um, I'm, I'm basically integrating data, data stream from multiple different uh, data streams, uh, information from different data streams. So then we have sensors that measure uh, air quality, humidity, uh, noise level, uh, olfactory, um, and also sound, lighting. And then we're deploying this in the environment. We're triangulating that with also uh, um, basically video data so that we can build a causality model of see seeing whether the environmental factors have any effect on the behavior of both either people or animals. Um, and this is done in the, currently done in the zoo enclosure. And then so we um, use, uh, we, we basically upload all this data through, through, uh, to, to the IU infrastructure. And then I'm building also the um, user-friendly interfaces to help uh, train volunteers uh, train observers and also scientists to do these data analysis. And then finally, um, what well, we haven't gotten there, the number step four and five, is that the, to do better animal science, to understand people's behavior, and also to have uh, 
the vision is to develop a generalized surveillance technology, for example, the uh, ICUs, also like home care, uh, where uh, people are living alone and they're requiring assistance. Um, and then also um, to help foster STEM education to, uh, you know, because if you're working with the zoos and, and children are very interested in, in animals, and then we're hoping to use this as a mechanism to provide STEM pathway to engage them in citizen science and STEM education. Thank you.